Hello everyone and welcome to uh, the first video for grade 11. Okay, this is the follow-on video from grade 10 when we looked at vectors and scalars and today we're going to be looking at vectors in two dimensions for grade 11. So let's just re do a little bit of revision from grade 10. So in grade 10, what do we learn? We learned the two uh, physical quantities that we deal with in physics. Okay, the first one, the scalar quantity, which only has a size or magnitude. And then we also looked at a vector quantity, which is a physical quantity that has size or magnitude and a direction. When we drew and learned how to draw actually uh, vectors in grade 10, we uh, drew them to scale. We also learned the scale that we use, one centimeter equals to 10 newtons. And remember when we drew vectors roughly, all right, we, we learned that the, the length of the arrow when we drew them roughly kind of gave us an approximate idea of the size of the vector okay right so we remember that the length of an arrow depicts the magnitude or size of the vector and the direction of the arrow represents the direction of the vector okay so for example all right I'm going this way all right so if we drew that to scale okay let's say I'm going three newtons and there's my arrow I could have drew it on that side, but I drew it over here. And of course, I'm going three newtons in a easterly direction. Okay, same way as if I went that way, I'd be going a little less than that. So maybe 2.5 newtons in a westerly direction. Okay, perfect. Now, I must highlight Right in grade 11, we will be learning how to represent vectors on a Cartesian plane. All right, as in your notes, uh, there's a Cartesian plane, and we're going to be using uh, for the purpose of this video compass directions. So we have our compass there north, south, east, west, northwest, northeast, southwest, southeast. All right, now I need to introduce this concept of bearing, okay? So for bearing, what we're going to need, we're going to need a protractor, okay? This is where your protractor comes in, okay? Uh, if you do not have a math set, I will encourage you to get a math set, okay? It's going to be useful to you for this type of work, and it actually will benefit you, not just in maths, but in other topics that we're going to look at in physics as well. Okay, so when we uh, have to use bearing, all right, bearing uh, as an angle in degrees measured clockwise from the end line. Okay, so if we have a direction or a, a vector moving in a certain direction from a north line, we need to calculate at what angle did he move, and then we can calculate the direction from that. So in this example, all right, OP. All right, OP over here, OP over here is 30 degrees, all right, from the north line, and OQ is in the direction of 210 degrees from the north line, all right? So OP, 30 degrees, in the direction of 30 degrees from the north line, and OQ is in the direction of 210 degrees from the end line. All right, so vectors in parallel. Vectors parallel to the working plane have only one direction and are called one-dimensional, or 1D. Their direction is selected as positive or negative. So if we take plus as positive, we take east as positive, all right, it's a plus sign, then west will have to be negative. Okay, so that's what we do. Okay, we need to choose a direction. All right, so we need to choose a direction. Ah, choose a direction. Okay, normally we take east as positive. 
right? And then west will have to be negative. As I mentioned in the previous video, this does not mean, okay, that the vector or the vector size is negative. We just use the negative sign to indicate direction. So when we would now depict these vectors, we draw the lengths in proportion to the magnitudes of the vector. So we drew there 50 newtons west, kind of small, and 20 newtons east, a little bit bigger, and so 30 newtons east is a little bit bigger, so hence the difference in size. All right. So the initial point of a vector is called the tail. All right, and the terminal point is called the head. So over here where the arrow is, this would be the head. And at the back here, wait, this would be called the tail of the vector. All right. All right, let's move on to the resultant of perpendicular vectors. So we'll be learning how to sketch parallel and perpendicular vectors in a Cartesian plane. Right, so representation. Okay, what is a force? Okay, that's what we need to understand. What is a force? Remember, a force is a vector. It has direction, okay? Force, all right? So, for example, if we have F, uh, Fg, we know that its direction is downwards, okay? Because it's gravity. Okay, it's down on the Earth. All right, excellent. If we have the normal force, Okay, we know that that is the normal force, which is upwards, in the opposite direction of gravity. Okay, and so force applied, if we have the force applied, okay, represented by F app, our right, force applied can either be that way, or that way, or that way, or even that way, depending on where the force is applied. Okay, so force has a direction. So, a force is a vector, and it has a specific magnitude, all right? And it's measured in newtons, people, all right? N, all right? We represent it in N, all right? And it is applied in a specific direction, as mentioned. So, uh, the example that is on the slide, all right? Let's assume three horizontal forces, F1, 35 newtons, east, F2, 20 newtons, east, and F3, 30 newtons, west, and three vertical forces, F4 is 50 newtons north, F5 is 30 newtons south, and F6 is 30 newtons north. Okay, the forces are applied simultaneously on a specific point. Now, that is such a lot of information just thrown at our faces, okay? So let's break it down a little bit slowly, okay? so. Do not get confused, okay? Do not get confused. That's the first step, okay? Denote your different forces and their different uh, sizes, okay? So, and also indicate their direction. So we are told that F1 is 35 newtons east, okay? So we know that F1 is 35 newtons east. Okay, F1 is 35 Newtons east. Okay, I'm not confused anymore. All right, F2. All right, this is a good skill to apply to any question, is write down what you have been given. Okay, write down the information. All right, all right, it's nothing wrong with writing down the information. Okay, if you are able to not get confused and you are able to see it and uh, just work with what you've been given from the question page, that's fine, okay? But if you are getting a little confused with all the words being thrown at you, just kindly write it down and uh, you will not get confused. And remember, these uh, techniques are there to help you, okay? Uh, so F2 was 20 newtons east, okay? F2 was also in the easterly direction, but it was 20 newtons, all right? Also east. Perfect, not confused about F2 anymore. F3, they said, was 30 newtons west, okay? I don't know about you, but I've already, in my mind, decided that I'm taking east as positive, all right? I've already decided. Okay, so I know that if I had to write this in numerical values, I would put negative 30. All right. 
and then there's three vertical forces all right so f4 was 15 newtons north all right let's get f4 over here f4 was 50 newtons north perfect that's going up all right that's going upwards north f5 was 30 newtons south all right see how i'm not getting confused i know what i'm working with and f6 was 30 newtons north as well okay there we go all of my information nicely neatly drawn on the side so i know what i'm working with okay that is excellent okay they tell us that the forces are applied simultaneously at this point okay and there we have it okay drawn over there okay on our cartesian plane okay i've drawn it for you in the notes okay to save some time okay all my forces are depicted there okay awesome so uh, f4 all right remember we said f4 was 15 newtons north okay i'm going to highlight just f4 over here all right we oh, f5 was 30 newtons south all right as i said negative 30 because i've chosen east and north as positive all right f3 was 30 newtons west all right and as i told you i decided that's going to be negative okay just to indicate direction all right f6 30 newtons north all right there we go i've represented that in a green line okay and then f2 was 20 newtons east all right I represented that in a purple line and F1 was 35 newtons east. So all of them are depicted here, okay? So as I as just pay attention here to the green and to the purple line, purposes of that is to indicate that I've got another force going in the same direction as the other ones. I cannot draw them on top of each other, so we draw them next to each other, okay? I drew my F6 30 newtons north next to my F4 blue line, which is 50 newtons north, just to indicate that there's also another northerly direction over here as well. Same with regards to F2 and F1. Okay, perfect.